Hello, this is Dr. Dave Gatros, uh, and I'm uh, doing this for my computer organization class uh, as an explanation on how to do two-dimensional arrays and how the computer really sees them. Well, what we have here is we have uh, a five by five matrix, okay? And um, we can see we have rows and columns, and this is how we human beings visualize two-dimensional arrays. And we can see that with the row one, we have numbers all ones. And the row two, we have all twos, so on and so forth. Uh, let's assume that uh, each number is a four byte or it's a full word uh, address. So this is uh, uh, 32 bits that uses to uh, store that one. Well, this is actually how the computer sees it. It sees it as just a long string, a linear uh, list of uh, numbers itself. To, so to address them, using what we call rows and columns, we have to do what's called offsets. So, uh, here's row one up here. It's the first five numbers. Row two is the second set of five numbers. Row three is the third set. This is the fourth set, and this is the fifth row right here. So, uh, we can see that each row is divided by so many spaces or so many characters or so many bytes after the second row. As it turns out, we can calculate that. So if we assume that each one of these occupies four bytes, okay, and there are five of them, then we can assume that this takes up 20 bytes. So the second row starts 20 bytes after the first row. The third row starts 20 bytes after the second row, and so on and so forth. So that's it. Let's recall each number is four bytes, each column is uh, uh, four bytes wide, and each row occurs every 20 bytes, which it can be calculated as the number of items in a column times the size. So that's four times five. Okay. So with that in mind, let's go do this. Okay. Let's say that I want the data element in the third row and the fourth column. How do I calculate that address? Okay. Well, that's done like this. The first thing we have to do is we have to take the row and we subtract one from it. And we subtract one from it because we're using zero to represent the starting point, not one, but zero. Okay. And then we multiply it times 20, which is the size of the row. Then we add that to the column that we want, which is the fourth column, we subtract one from it and we multiply it times the size of the column. And that's a very important to know the size of the column. So that comes down to this. This is 2 times 20, which is 40. This is 3 times 4, which is 12, which gets us the number 52. Well, let's go back and look at that. Now remember, it is the third row and the fourth column. Okay. So, here is the third row and the fourth column. And what I've done is I've actually put the addresses of the starting location of that element right there, and it's 52. And if we look up here, we can actually see it too. Uh, 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. And we go right here. Here is the element that we want. And let me just highlight that for you. This is the element that we want right here. This is the fourth element in the third row, it's right there, and it is actually 52 bytes offset from the beginning of the uh, array itself. Well that's a brief explanation of how the computer visualizes uh, 2D arrays inside a computer itself. Now what we'd like to do is we'd like to implement this in uh, MIPS assembly language, and that's what we're going to do next. Well, now that we've seen how to do it on paper, let's see how to write a program to do it. And I've written a simple little program right here to uh, access the array, just as we put it on there. I've simplified it a little bit. I've declared an array here uh, called 2D, and I've loaded it with 25 numbers. Now, the reason I've done this is so we can make sure that whenever I access an element here, we'll know that I've accessed the correct one. We'll assume that this is a 5x5 five five array, just like we showed you on the paper that we uh, did previously in the previous scene. Uh, the first five are row one, the second five is row two, the third five is row three, so on and so forth. So if I say, uh, let me get to 
row 3 element 5 then I would actually be on 15 and you can say 3 times 5 is 15 and there you go alright well here's how we're going to do it I'm going to write a subroutine and I'll show you the subroutine first this is it it's called get offset now what I've done is it's a ger generic routine that should work for almost any array access and you're welcome to use it on your programs that you write just make sure that you cite this reference and say you got it from this uh, particular location particular video what I'm going to do is when I call this routine I'm going to pass in four parameters the first one in A0 was going to be the row that I want and the second parameter is going to be the column so the row and column the XY coordinate will be in A0 and A1 to make it generic I'm also going to pass in how big how many bytes are in that row in a single row and I'm going to pass how, how wide each column is in this particular case each row is 20 bytes long and each column is 4 bytes long it's a full word then I'm going to, to do this very simple routine I'm going to save off the row number the column number the size of the row and the column of the size I need to subtract one from the row and the column so the math works out correctly I'm going to calculate the row offset by multiplying it times the size of the row and I'm going to calculate the column offset by calculating multiplying the column times its size I'm going to add the row and column offsets together and I'm going to return that to the main routine up here in the main routine okay, okay I'm going to call the routine I'm going to move uh, I'm going to uh, ask the user to input a row and to input a column let me make this uh, comment this row right here column number okay column number I'm going to read in the row and the column and I'm going to put those in the appropriate places and then call the routine here is the call right here these uh, f five lines of code right here uh, are the call you can see I'm getting stack space storing the return address making the call to the routine coming back I'm restoring the return address and restoring the stack space and then basically what I'm going to do here is get the address of the array add the offset that I got from my routine to it and then I'm just going to go down here and print that number off we'll look at that code for a little bit and I'll actually put this code up on my uh, canvas site for you to uh, to take a look at too. Uh, let's save that. We'll save it, and we'll go to our Qt spim career here, and we'll save file, reinitialize and load. We will 2D array, and then we will say run. It says what row and number do I want? Well, I'm just going to input the one I had. I'm going to say row three and the column 5 and it comes out with the number 15 and if we go back and look at our example right here we see that that is indeed the case that is the last element in row 3 so this works out pretty well this is how you access 2D arrays in, um, in a computer using assembly language hope this helps you out look forward to doing the next one this is Dr. Dave Gatro saying uh, happy coding